HITCO Mining's special coverage of the Precious Metal Summit in Zurich is brought to you by Vizsla Copper. Has Silver run out of steam? This is Paul Harris with Kitco Mining at the Precious Metal Summit in Zurich, Switzerland. Joining me to discuss this is Vizsla Silver Chair Craig Parry, who's also Executive Chair of Vizsla Copper, our sponsor here. Good morning, Craig. Welcome to Kitco. Hi, Paul. Great to be back. Now, silver markets, since the last time we've spoken, a lot has changed, but nothing has changed in some ways. Silver is now moving differently to gold, but it's still remaining stubbornly, can't get past that $23 per ounce. What's going on? Yeah, look, it, it is performing pretty well, I think, and I think we'll see much, uh, much better performance over the next 12 months, certainly. We're in a very interesting and, and, and largely unprecedented market at the moment where you've got fundamental undersupply by about 15 20%. And I think that plays out over the next 12 months. That aside, of course, you've got a, an extraordinary macro picture where you've got real challenges ahead. Uh, we think that we're going to see US cutting interest rates. We'll see the, the dollar start to retrace, uh, in which case, you know, we saw this precedent in um, 2008, 2009, where the, the dollar came off uh, during the GFC. Uh, and um, metal prices performed extraordinarily well. You, you know, the gold price uh, started at 1300 went to 600 and then was back at thirteen or 1400 pretty quickly within a year. We, we've got the same setup coming here, I think, and, um, you, you know, you're going to see, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we see $3,000 per ounce gold by the back end of next year. Uh, but silver, of course, in those markets always outperforms. So now you've got a supply side uh, a, a supply demand gap that's opened up there, demand much greater than supply in the silver market, uh, followed by that macro picture and, 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 and easing at some point next year and a retracement in the US dollar. So, and, and silver always outperforms. So I think we're gonna have an extraordinary silver market. I wouldn't be surprised if we see $100 silver in the next 18 months. Given that there is a silver deficit at the moment, why is silver finding it so hard to break out well above that $23 per ounce? Yeah, you, of course, you always have that secondary supply out there, ingots, bullion sitting on the sidelines that can come in. We've seen that in the uranium market, probably capped the uranium price for five years longer than anyone expected by the supply, secondary supply coming back into the market. Uh, and of course, you know, our, our friend Eric Sprott and one of our major investors at, at Wiesler Silver and Wiesler Copper, um, Eric talks, uh, you know, at length about the manipulated trade that is the silver market. The fact that we see, you know, uh, the, the Asian markets open up, prices rise pretty strongly throughout the day. And as soon as New York comes online and JP Morgan, who I think have been convicted of, uh, of, of manipulating that market and fined $900 million, continue to do that and come in and step back in and step on that paper market. So there's, there's probably not the true price discovery uh, that we would expect. But I think that that washes out over the next 12 months as we move into this changing macro environment and probably quantitative easing over that time. As you mentioned, uh, the, the primary supply or the main supply of silver is as a byproduct. Gold is about $2,000 per ounce, thereabouts. And copper's also historically relatively high levels. So the supply from those secondary sources, does that create an overhang on, on primary silver producers or, or developers such as yourself? Look, I think to some extent, usually that metal's parked. I was down at the uh, the New Orleans Investment Conference, Brian Lundin's conference there the other day. Um, John, uh, John McLeod uh, asked the question of his audience, you know, who, who here owns a Tesla? And I think of about 30 people, one person put up their hand. Uh, who owns silver and gold bullion and uh, everyone, 99.9% .9 of the people in the room put up their hand. So you've got that there, you know, private holders of bullion are typically uh, hold it for the longer term, but there are traders, of course, that, that hold bullion and can provide that second so, secondary supply into the market. But we think that that's a minor issue. And when you've got such a big market as silver in, in deep, fundamental undersupply, there's only one thing that can happen and that's prices have to go up. Okay. Now, what are the key things you're keeping your eye on in the silver space at the moment and going into 2024? Well, we're supply side tragics, of course. I don't look too much at the silver picture other than to understand that, that fundamental supply demand gap, um, you know, and, and where things are treading tra uh, and heading. 
Um, silver, you know, the price is not too bad at the moment, certainly off a, a base of about $14 a few years ago. So we're looking okay. Uh, but, uh, you, you know, I tend to look more at the supply side and where things are coming from. Of course, you've seen pick up in copper price. Um, you know, so that, that sees a little bit of a pick up in supply. Uh, of silver from the likes of KGHM where there's secondary supply. But that we, we don't think that's a major factor at the moment. And what we do see is, a, again, the same thing, you know, I'm here representing Wiesler Copper as well. Um, in all metals, Paul, you're seeing a serious uh, challenge supply side where not enough exploration work's been un done over the last 10 years. That's led into a lack of uh, lack of permitting and a lack of development. So there's not much out there to come on stream. Um, you know, Visa Silver is probably the biggest uh, project in that sense globally that could come on stream in the next five years. Uh, but but you know we we see that continued supply side challenge uh, presenting an opportunity. In, in in those terms, you know, there's not a lot of silver primary silver mines out there. There's not a lot of primary silver projects out there. We're talking about uranium, we're talking about copper. Part of the conversation will be the incentive price for new production. In the silver sphere, do you talk about incentive price? If it goes up to $25 per ounce or $30 per ounce, will that trigger a lot of new supply to come in, you know, new, new, new primary mine builds in Mexico or maybe Peru? That's an excellent question. Uh, look, to some extent, I think, although, you know, those challenges around permitting particularly, uh, are much greater than they have in all of history. So uh, trying to get a project uh, developed in this day and age, very, very tough. I think there are, you, you know, there are a bunch of smaller projects that could come on stream that supply, supply uh, the market modestly, but that's not gonna, you know, that's not gonna go bridge that 20% supply, supply demand gap. Um, you know, one project that can, of course, is, is Wiesler Silvers, and uh, we're, we're fast advancing that project towards development. Um, yeah, and we'll come back to that, I think. Well, yeah, my, my next point would be, you know, it's, it's all well and good, but you've got to get there. And uh, it's been a pretty tough market for, for juniors. Um, I bet you're sort of, you must be quite glad you don't have to raise capital right at this moment. Yeah, look, 100%. We're in a very fortunate position there. I think um, the last time we financed was, was in the first quarter of this year. We raised another 35 million. So in the last 12 months, we've raised about 65 million. We've still got over 30 million in the bank there at Visa Silver. Uh, you know, we've reduced our rig count from about 11 or 12 rigs down to six rigs today. And that's an important point to make. Uh, if you like silver, you should be investing in, in companies that have catalysts. And so we've still got six rigs turning. Uh, we're commencing, well, we, we're working on a resource upgrade there. Uh, we've drilled over 90,000 metres this year so far. So, so good news coming out on that front. I think we'll have a resource upgrade uh, first quarter of next year, which, um, you know, I, I think will be very, very important for our investors and shareholders. Um, and uh, so a lot, lot going on in the background there, but, um, you know, plenty of good catalysts to, uh, to, to get Visa Silver's share price to where it should be. And if you look at some of those comps, uh, I think, um, you know, where we're heading is a mag silver type valuation. Uh, we're at about three, 350 million today. Mag silver's at about 1.2, 1.3 billion. Um, I think our projects uh, considerably better than Mag Silvers. They've got a fabulous project, of course, but we control ours 100%. We control that district 100%. So, um, you know, that's where we're heading over the next 12 to 18 months, I think. Now, you mentioned um, you've got a resource update coming next year, early next year, and a PEA as well. What, what are the, the next steps towards building the, the sort of kind of valuation that Mag Silver has? Look, uh, I think, uh, so the, the, the PEA will be important to show the market economics, but we're not doing that simply to show economics. We're all about building the project. You know, you know our internal work shows that this will be a, uh, a, a major new silver district and a major new silver producer. Um, so our intention is to go ahead and build the project. It's an interesting situation. I, very rare that I've seen a project like this where, you know, we've now got a resource base of, of 220 ver million very high grade ounces of silver. Um, that's growing substantially and, you, you know, anyone can look at the news releases over the past 12 months since our last resource update. 
uh, and you, you can see that that resource is about to grow spectacularly. It's very, very high grade. We know that that's going to be an economic project, I think, at this stage. You, you know, very forward looking statement there, but the PEA will prove that. Um, and then, uh, you know, so we're in great shape. I should say, you know, we've had a few interesting things here recently. We've had Eduardo Luna down to site. Eduardo is one of the most legendary mining entrepreneurs in Mexico, he was on the board of Wheat and Precious Metals until recently. Um, you know, Eduardo assures me that there'll be uh, billions of ounces of silver on the property. We also had Dr. Peter McGaw, who's an advisor to the company now, head down to site a couple of, uh, about a month ago. Uh, and Peter made the point to us, and I, I quote him directly here, uh, and I hope he doesn't mind, but he said that, uh, well, there are uh, nine uh, billion ounce plus silver districts on the planet, five of which are in Mexico, and this is about to be the 10th. So, you know, people are starting to cotton on. Once you get down to site and you see the scale of the project, where we've drilled the resource base is coming off a tiny fraction of the property about 15 percent of the known veins have been drilled you start to go oh okay this is going to be a huge project a billion ounces is a big number that's what sort of five times uh, what you've just said so uh, no pressure on your geologist then no what's this space what's this space I, i'm i'm very confident i've never been more confident of something in my life that you know this is a it's a true district it, it looks and eduardo said this to me you know eduardo uh, was the general manager of San Damas back in the day. He said, this is a repeat of San Damas. And I, I don't know the exact production figures from San Damas, but certainly over a billion ounces of silver and north of five million ounces of gold. So, um, you know, that's what we've got coming up. Big forward looking statement there, but, um, you know, it doesn't, it, you, it doesn't take a geologist to go to site to realise that you can put the pieces together. So a billion ounces at Panuco in Sinaloa. You heard it on Kitco Mining first. <laughs> Craig Barry, thank you very much for joining us today. Good on you, Paul. This is Paul Harris for Kitco Mining at the Precious Metal Summit in Zurich. And if you like what you see, don't forget to subscribe. Kitco Mining's special coverage of the Precious Metal Summit in Zurich is brought to you by Isla Copper.